We're going to look at a timeline of some of the major events in Earth's history and look at a little bit of the biological and chemical evolution. So starting 4.6 billion years ago, when our solar system was formed, uh, we've talked a little bit about the nebular theory, where there was a cloud of dust and gas that condensed. The gases at the center formed the sun, the leftover dust and gas formed the planets. Well, when this occurred and the Earth first formed, it was molten. Um, for a couple of reasons. The heat that was generated by collisions with um, meteorites, because at that time we had no atmosphere to protect us, and also the radioactive decay going along in the, or going on in the interior of the Earth. Um, as the Earth began to cool, uh, we had a hard crust form, and volcanic activity started releasing gases and forming the early atmosphere. So it was about 4.4 billion years ago we saw our early atmosphere. It was made up of methane, ammonia, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, water vapor. No oxygen at this point, so there was no life on Earth. About 3.9 billion years ago, we start seeing our first um, cells. We had protocells that evolved into um, our single-celled prokaryotes. So about 3.7 billion years ago, we start seeing our first evidence of bacteria. Okay, then that led to um, our first photosynthetic bacteria, the cyanobacteria. Today we call them blue-green algae. This is about 2.3 billion years ago. They took the carbon dioxide from the water, because we started having water on Earth at this point, um, converting it into glucose, and the byproduct was oxygen. So we start seeing oxygen in the water and in the atmosphere. About 2.1 billion years ago, the oxygen levels were high enough. They started to react with ultraviolet radiation to form O3, which is ozone. So when we started seeing ozone in the atmosphere, temperatures started to drop because the ozone was absorbing some of the ultraviolet radiation. Um, and after that, that allowed um, life to evolve even more. We started seeing our first eukaryotes. Uh, which are multicellular. They had sexual reproduction, so their offspring were genetically diverse. So we started seeing genetic diversity. Um, at about 600 million years ago, so we're way along this um, timeline, let's slide it down here a bit, our atmosphere was at um, basically the way it is today. We had um, nitrogen was about 78%, oxygen 21%, and carbon dioxide's um, less than 1% of the atmosphere. And it still is today, um, even though that tends to be the gas that we hear the most about. Now, most of the life on Earth, if you look at this, is within the last uh, billion years. So we've got one billion years ago. Um, with ozone and our temperatures start cooling down, we start seeing plants form on the surface of the Earth. Um, our first animals that could live on uh, land were the amphibians. They still could live in the water, but also the land as well. That was about 375 million years ago. Um, after that, reptiles were the first to live only on land, 330 million years ago. First mammals, 220 million years ago. The first human ancestors were about 1 million years ago, and then modern humans only about 200,000 years ago. And then here we are at our present. So if we look at this as a 24-hour clock, humans have been here like a second. When we take a look at evolution, we're talking about the change in the gene pool of a population over a period of time. This is a continuous process. It's not something that just happens all at once. Um, each, for example, each generation of humans has different genetic mix um, than their parents, so we're talking about the same species here. We're talking about microevolution, changes that uh, um, occur within the human race uh, over time. We can also talk about macroevolution, and macroevolution we get um, uh, due to speciation. And uh, one way we get speciation is with the isolation of um, things such as two beetle populations, it's going to um, lead to the inability for them to interbreed with one another, so it's going to lead to a whole new um, species itself. Diagram there down at the bottom leads to, or shows you the development of this new species. Um, you can see there the entire original population on the left side of the river. Um, as that river is meandering through, eventually it's going to cut um, that original population in half be, uh, becoming a barrier um, so they can no longer 
um, interbreed uh, with the other population. Over time, this is going to then make up a new species because of the fact that the populations have been removed from one another, so each population cannot um, produce uh, fertile offspring with the other, um, creating their own species and then eventually their own genetic traits. With microevolution, it is driven by genetic variability. Um, a gene pool is just uh, the all of the genes possessed by the individuals of a population um, together. So this would be um, microevolution takes a look at that change in the population's gene pool over a specific period of time. What happens with microevolution and the reason that we get changes is through one of five things um, mutation, natural selection, genetic drift, artificial selection, or coevolution. What mutation is, is with any mutation, it's only going to, uh, we're only going to see changes in the reproductive cells that get passed on to the offspring. These can be random and unpredictable. Um, they are going to be the only source of completely new genetic material. And the reason that we get them, you know, with very rare events such as radioactivity um, or just random mistakes. Natural selection has three conditions that are necessary for evolution by natural, natural selection to occur. It's got to be a natural variability, there needs to be a heritable trait, and there has to be differential reproduction. The individuals without the adaptive trait are going to um, die or become sterile, so they're going to have less offspring, and then that um, trait will just eventually go away. The three different types of our natural selection, um, directional selection, this is going to focus on going from uh, the end of the normal range um, going to the opposite end of the normal range, and it's going to be because of kind of survival uh, of the fittest. You need to, if some, they need to adapt to survive, um, and so it's going to focus on the traits that um, are allowing them to survive, and they will just move to the complete opposite end of the spectrum. Stabilizing selection favors the the average. Um, if you are an outlier or at one of the extremes, you are not going to be able to make it. Um, if you're average, that's how you're going to be able to survive, and stabilizing selection focuses there. Diversifying or disruptive selection is the opposite. It favors both extremes. The average are not going to be able to survive, so that population or those genetic traits we are going to see die off, and the um, evolution of the extremes will start to flourish. With genetic drift, um, using the examples of the beetles, um, if we have first generation of, um, of beetles there on the left that you can see um, breeding to create a second generation, so if we have one green breeding with a brown um, or two greens um, or two browns, it's just going to be random luck as to what the offspring or what the trait of the offspring will end up being looking like. Are they going to be green or are they going to be brown? Artificial selection is something that we as humans um, have taken on and started to do. Uh, we use the selective breeding process to select the desirable traits that we uh, see fit. You see this a lot of times with the breeding of, of horses, um, especially when it comes to the race horses. You use prior champions to then breed hopefully future champions on the racetrack. Coevolution is the interaction between species and this can result in the microevolution um, in each of their populations. Uh, for example, if, um, if, the owl, um, if the owl evolves so they can uh, hunt mice better, then the mice um, are also going to then evolve by the fact that those that can get away are going to be those that survive and so therefore those traits are going to be the ones that get passed on, not the traits of the mice that get captured. Macroevolution is taking a look at speciation or extinction, the creation of a new species or the, um, the end of a speciation. 
or uh, end of a species, excuse me. With speciation in the formation of a new species, this can happen based off of geographic isolation, where groups of the same population get separated, or reproductive isolation, um, which we also call divergence, which is, means they then can't uh, reproduce. Things that cause isolation, um, physical things here on Earth, earthquakes, volcanoes, flooding, catastrophes, um, any of those events that are going to then potentially separate um, a population. Uh, social causes, things like emigration, the movement from a continent um, to an island. Um, prime example here is the...